Hello and welcome to another episode of Make It a Double Double. Some of you eagle-eyed or eagle-eared listeners might know that this isn't Adam's voice for a change. It's taken about 40 episodes, but we finally kicked him off. Uh, now, nah, just joking, he has uh, got better things to do, like attend uh, the Leicester Spurs game this evening. But if you're uh, going to Turf Moor every other week, you've got to watch some decent football every now and again, haven't you? So who can blame him, really? Thought you we were going to come in with the big. Yeah. Hello. I was. I was. Gonna, I was going to try an East Lancashire accent, but I don't think it was going down very well. I don't want to offend too many people at once. So, as you would have heard, I'm joined, as per usual, by Izzy Palazon's biggest fanboy, Mr. Azzy Mac, and we've got two very special guests from across the channel. Uh, over in Germany, we've got the boys from Doppel DNP podcast, Jacob and Yannick. How are we boys doing? All right? Yeah, great. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for inviting. Yeah. Awesome. I Thanks didn't mess up that intro too badly, did I? No, it, I was quite it good. It was great. Try. Adam is yeah, good. good, yes. <laughs> is it better than Adam? You just need to be a little bit more flared with it. I think you need a little I bit more so. you know, flamboyancy. I think so. Yeah, uh, we'll get there. We'll get there. We, he's off for three weeks soon anyway, so uh, plenty of practice. You've, you've taken the role, haven't you now, so I don't have to do one. Yeah, that's very true. That's very true. So, boys, German, the old Oktoberfest <laughs> is fast approaching, <laughs> and so we are going to swing open the doors to the So Red Saloon. So what have you brought with us, with yourselves today for us? So we start the alcoholic drink with a bourbon highball. But since we both don't drink, we don't have one here. <laughs> but we have a good non-alcoholic choice, which is, I brought it here because I don't know if it has a name. I just like it to drink it like this. This is rosemary. I don't know if you know it. Yeah. yeah. This is like non-alcoholic gin. I don't know how you call it. I we don't call remember. it alcoholic gin. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> and in the end, if there is enough blood orange juice, it looks like this. Wow. So, nice, of course. That looks good. Yeah, if you're, I, if you're I listening it. to the podcast, you need to get over to the YouTube. That looks a stunning yeah. drink, to be fair. What about yourself, Yannick? Yeah, mine uh, doesn't look as good as Jakob's. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I were in like two supermarkets and I haven't found anything Jakob wanted me to find. So, yeah. But awesome. it's okay. It works. Well, have you gone for the non-alcoholic or have you gone for the alcoholic choice, Matt? I've gone for the alcoholic choice, surprise, surprise. <laughs> but one thing that will surprise you is the measure isn't going to be as big this week. So for anyone that doesn't know, what is it, a bourbon high? Highball, yeah. Highball, highball. highball. So I wasn't actually familiar with this, so I had to Google Never it. Never heard of it. And yeah. It's basically bourbon mixed with and... I, th I think the one I found is a fancy version because it basically says replace your sort of um, your drink, your mixing drink with a ginger ale yep. and a bit of, and a bit of uh, lemon juice. That's exactly what I had in mind. Perfect. Perfect. Well, I don't have the lemon juice, but I've got the ginger ale and I've got the bourbon. Now, That's the most important part. Yeah. <laughs> I'm currently staying at my parents' house. So my whiskey cupboard um, is a lot slimmer than what it is at my house so i've actually got a miniature <laughs> so i've got a miniature whiskey and i've got ginger ale i'll crack it open now what about you as well if anyone has listened before bourbon is my worst choice of drink i cannot stand it like it is horrific so for one of the first times ever i've fit the criteria of the non-alcoholic gin it is already in there that's it it's it's sat in here and blood orange like drink isn't that common in the uk so i found a sam pellegrini sparkling blood orange beverage yeah, so we mix we mix gin with sparkling drink uh, like mixes more so i thought it's probably the closest i'll get so Yeah, that's not bad. So, yeah, I've never had non-alcoholic gin because, as most people know, 
I like alcohol too much. So I normally would have gone with a pure alcohol, but this was sat in the cupboard and I've never had it before. And I thought, well, what a perfect time to whack it out and fit, fit the criteria of non-alcoholic drink for the week. Perfect. Cheers to you boys then. Cheers, Cheers gents. Cheers. Cheers, lads. Oh, it's good that whiskey and ginger beer, you can't go wrong. <laughs> you really can. So, Jacob and or Jacob, sorry, we had this conversation before, and you said to call you Jacob, not Jacob, but yeah, <laughs> Jacob and Yannick. Um, so we'll start off by asking you both the question that we started this podcast asking everyone, and it's slowly disintegrated over time, but we'll ask you guys anyway. How did you both get into So Rare initially? Same story. Should I tell us? <laughs> yeah, go on. Yeah. So it was a little bit a few days earlier, I'd say, but we both know each other like forever. And we started, um, we don't live together, it, like the distance is pretty far. So we started both a FIPA page on Instagram like 10 years ago. And we both posted content there. And I don't know if you know Fiago. Yeah. yeah. And Fiago was kind of a guy that was part of the German community back then too. So we know Fiago and watched some videos of him. And then we first uh, kind of get got in contact, in touch with uh, Sora and started in the end of 2021, I guess. And yeah, I told Yannick and he also knew Fiago and we started it with a pretty huge investment back then. And we tried to survive <laughs> with the budget until today. And it kind of <laughs> did work better than the economic situation probably has been in the years. But yeah, so we had a lot of fun. And that's why we're here. So did you say it was towards the end of 21? Yeah. Yeah. So I joined September 2021. Okay. Yeah. I think it was November for us or December. Yeah. So probably yeah, a similar December. time. So, yeah. yeah. So you was joining at the same time as me when the cheapest limited goalkeeper was about 130 quid. <laughs> I bought Mark Flecken for like 300, the limited <laughs> yeah. version. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was brutal. Yeah, yeah. I, I bought Castells for, for like 250, I think. Yeah. My first team was like Castells, Lacour, Wittmar, Barrero and Onisivo, which wasn't as successful as I yeah, hoped. But after that, I bought a Salzburg U23 stack which was yeah pretty successful but yeah these prices were crazy <laughs> i can't even i can't even think about it being like that anymore like if someone turned no. around and said you need to you need to buy a limited player for 300 pounds i'd have been like i am not getting involved in that game where i actually, I actually do love ago, I didn't care i actually do love buying them back like buying a flecken right now it feels like i don't even have to send yeah. an offer it's like it's a perfect price. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I did that this week and I needed a couple of Premier League players before it came back. And years ago, you were putting offers into every single one on the market, trying to save 10, 15, 20 pounds. And I just bought the two cheapest ones off the market because it was like, <laughs> it's not worth saving 50p or pound on a player that's now 10 yeah. quid, really, is it? Yeah, I've, I've lost out on so many players that I wanted to get but I just I'm trying to shave like 10% off of like 20 quid or 30 yeah. quid there's no point now is there just just pick them up just pick them up and then paid more because the list price started going up yeah yeah <laughs> done that a few times so where so where do your gallery sit now then Blaz? you mostly play limited rare bit of both what regions do you sort of play yeah I started um, I play yeah, only yeah. only limited and at the moment, it's like almost every competition, I'd say. So, in the classic uh, version, of course. So, I have a yeah. huge gallery, like 900 cards. And I'm pretty big in the MLS because Messi is my favorite player. So, yeah, of course, I also have to buy him. And then all the other big guys from the MLS. And then I started buying all the big guys from La Liga, except the Madrid boys. Um, yeah, and... So it's basically all comp all competitions right now because the others are like I even have contender lineups, but I don't even remember remember the names of the players I am lining up. <laughs> the team is called like I never will watch a game and <laughs> so yeah. So if you've well, you got nine if you've yeah. got nine hundred players, how long does it take you to build your lineups? 
Yeah, it's okay. Like I have an Argentinos Juniors, you know, the team from Argentina. Yeah, yeah. I have a collection and basically no, no of the players, I have all players, nobody's playing for the juniors anymore. So it's not that much times because 400 players are like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. We had a, and how how much time the... did you save for the button? Yeah. The button. I don't even have it right now. I had to no, I waited I Friday yet. until deadline because I thought I would get it. But after that, I had to hopefully one last time. <laughs> I have it now. Finally. I think everyone has it now, don't they? It, it could oh, be true. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I listen, I listen I to, know, I listen, listen back to Laird Sarah Data podcast from Friday. And I think he said that what they um, should have communicated but didn't communicate was that not everyone was going to get the button before the start of the last game week, they were rolling out in waves and it was going to be like one wave was going to be prior to the weekend game week. The other wave was prior to this midweek. So I believe everyone should have it before um, this midweek game week. Where, where would the button be? Because I don't have one yet. <laughs> so you go to your line, you go to your lineup builder, yeah. you go to your lineup builder and then you go to on the near the top, it's my teams. Oh yeah, oh yeah. My yeah, team, and it's on the right hand side. Oh, so, so maybe I did have it for last weekend because <laughs> I never went on my teams. Laird did an amazing oh. video talking you through how to do it as well. I don't watch Laird. <laughs> <laughs> so Jacob, you said that you play pretty much every division. So I have a question for you: How many of the Cap Two Fifties did you enter? Did you enter three lineups? Yeah. Is that because you run out of places to play them? Yeah, I actually have some of the players. I have like two versions. So the Philly boys, Blake Wagner, I have like double. And I I mean, 900 players is a good sign because I had like cap of zero for two players. So I could fit them mm. in because I had the Seattle boys, the attack. And at the end, it was all bullshit. So <laughs> nothing happened. But it's like with the MLS boys, it's already a big mess because I, a lot of the time I have like two or three goalkeepers. I couldn't even line up. So it's... They're in the academy teams, and most of the time, these are the boys that smash like 90s, and I'm like angry mm. all weekend. <laughs> but okay, so I can't I work out. Sorry, yeah, I, I can't work out from the weekend if the fact that they've got rid of the cap divisions, obviously apart from the special weekly um, and all star, means that there's not enough divisions for me to enter, or I haven't adapted my gallery well enough because I had to enter three Cap 250 lineups into limited and one into rare. Well, the thing that screwed me over was that the MLS players that are playing are in the cup, but you can't use them in Challenger. So yeah. I had to try and squeeze LAFC into a 250, which is impossible. So... I didn't use Hollingshead, who dropped a 99.7. I didn't use Bogus, who got a decisive. I didn't use Atu Esther. I, didn't, like, I only got Larice and Buanga in a team, who were the two highest scorers, and the other three makeshift players that I had to put in did crap, which let the whole lineup down. So that's the one thing I would say is a very big detriment at the moment, is that if they don't have the right special weeklies, you can't always use your players which is crazy. You should be able to use your player whenever they're playing, really. I like I'm if the biggest in. fear I have is like the Champions League because the League's Cup is kind of it's important for us hardcore players, but the Champions League is like yeah. the biggest competition in the world and the Stars player, I heard uh, I think in the Sora data show they talked about it, Mbappé will rotate in the weekend and there is enough plays, but in the midweeks, they need to have big competitions because the big players will play in the Champions League and maybe don't even yeah. play the, the game before and the game week after in the in the league matches where there are enough competitions. So, yeah. And you can't but, use them. If they're in the Champions League, you can't use them in the champion entry. Mm -hmm. So there needs to be some really high entry points on the specialists, on the special like, weeklies that they put out. So they have just announced the European Knights special event. Um, which was, I think that dropped. Is this the it? one with the in-season guys? Uh, yeah, so it basically says uh, European Knights, $100,000 in total cash rewards. So these are over uh, game week 10. There's a European Champions special, which I believe is Champions League. And then game week 14, 
uh, is uh, one European League and Conference special, which I assume is the Europa League and obviously the Europa Conference League. So there's some pretty wild cash prizes for that. So in the game week 10, which is the Champions League, for finishing first um, in limited, you win $3,000 and a star card. Uh, it's brilliant, but if, if you have to use in season, yeah, what is the requirement like for in season, isn't it? Yeah, so it's four in season cards, a minimum yeah, of four in season like cards per team. So, what I we don't do like that. Pe people with then classic Mbappe or Bellingham, you can use one, okay, but you need four more in season cards to buy straight at the beginning. Yeah, so they because, there will because be. The issue in my in my eyes was like the that they have like as you said the star cards and the big mm -hmm. cash. Why don't they just have like a classic one where there is a star card for place one and the cash for the in season? Because I don't play in season yeah. to win cards, so yeah, yeah, it's like I don't get it. But and they, the first they week, created but... they created this difference as well. They created in season and classic, yeah, in exactly, the, to make it in worth investing in new cards so you can win cash and do things but you can also invest in classic cards and win cards to progress you can't progress if you can't use them so i do think that they've let themselves down a little bit on a few things like that so what i will say is that it does say that there will be um all-star running at the same time with three entries there we go so you, so you will be able to put three all-star entries in at the same time you could have told me that before. I just said they'd let themselves down. But still, is that enough? <laughs> yeah, the, the question I'd say, is... Yeah, I'd say so. If the Chinese league is playing the MLS guys, then we don't need an Mbappe to, to be in the part of the lineup in All-Stars because the other... Like, the Champions League matches are, like, the further you go into the season, they are, like, much harder to for big scores, except for, like, a league's match in All-Stars where there's always an easy matchup for not the star players in this case but it's the first yeah. game week and maybe they will adjust it as as long as we can line them up it's i'm i'm fine so yeah i just think that the the worst thing they can do now after creating a divide of in season and classic is force people's hand to buy in season who have prepared themselves to try and win rather than purchase which to be yeah. fair is working on a weekend i think the week like this weekend's just shown that it works really well within season because the people who've invested had a really good chance. I think it was a rare division that had like 70% of people who entered got cash because they they bought early and they invested and they've done it. Yeah. So it's worth it, but they just need to make sure they don't segregate it too much that one gets favoured more than the other. Hmm. Yeah. How much... So for the Champions League Special Weekly then, in rare, what do you reckon the cash prize is in dollars? So it was three for limited, three k. Three, three thousand, uh, yeah, three thousand for limited. It's got to be at least double. I'd have said five or six. Seven thousand dollars and a star rare. And then you're going to get a star in season rare. So you're looking at one of the top boys that's going to be worth a hell of a lot of money. Hmm. Well, I'm still not spending. <laughs> Just trying to convince people to open their wallets. That's all. That's all. <laughs> hey, I've tried to open my wallet and been banned yeah. for it. Don't don't pay your mortgage and get Sarah cars. That's that's the motto, isn't it? Not financial advice. <laughs> cool. So, so you boys, as I said at the start, started your own or have your own so rare podcast, the Doppel DNP. The German Sora podcast. How long have you boys been doing that? Sort of what made you do it? Um, yeah, talk to us about that. Yeah, I think we have it for like one and a half years now. We are, um, tomorrow we will release like the seventy third. Yes. Yeah. Um, episode. Episode. Yeah. Episode of the podcast, which is really much i think like yeah it's a, already a long time and like jacob said we know us for like eight nine years now and we always talked like every day about uh football fifa and no sorry and then we thought 
yeah, why don't we start a podcast? And then we started a podcast. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, so same, we had like same same as us really. We were speaking about it every day and went, why don't we just do it in front of camera instead of through WhatsApp? Yeah, if if you check our WhatsApp chat, it's like the amount of voice messages and the like also like in half an hour messages like crazy for normal people, but we can talk about our lineups like for forever. And then we started yeah. okay, like an hour a week is like the perfect op opportunity to talk about it. And even that is not kind of not enough because we still talk in WhatsApp. <laughs> but yeah. Well we we just decided to instead of abusing each other through text form, we do it in a public forum. Because yeah. because why not? Give yeah. Adam the platform he always wanted. Yeah. <laughs> instead of calling everyone everyone out on Twitter, he can do it in front of a camera instead. <laughs> yeah, he, he yeah, loves um he loves arguing, does that boy? He does. He does. <laughs> so where when did you start your podcast? Like from, from a time perspective? So ours was about a year ago. I think it was September yeah. last year. Yeah, it was a couple of months before Christmas, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We started like a few months earlier, but we had like also like a rough time in the first year because I had like a Freiburg stack and I got like in six months like one reward and it was like worth like the the, the prices were so huge, but my card worth I don't re even remember it was like five quid, like still, <laughs> and it was horrible. And after the season, I sold it with like the the, the, the biggest loss I've ever took on the cards, <laughs> but okay, so. But back then, it wouldn't be a good idea to talk in a podcast uh, about strategies or people we mm. bought because, yeah. <laughs> but after yes. that, like one year of experience at the moment, like talking about big galleries, we can enter any mode, any specialist uh, uh, competition mm. in limited. It's kind of, it's awesome for us. We started like Yannick uh, is a kind of part of the rare competition sometimes, but I like... I think I would stay forever in the limited division because I enjoy having the big guys now and I don't want to sell them and play with not the big guys anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I've tried to do that in rare because I was always a threshold player and just wanted to hit threshold every week. And then as soon as the change came about, I tried to cut the gallery down and buy some big rares. So I picked up people like Dennis Buanga and... I've got Mertens now who can score big, and it's quite nice to know you can have big hitters rather than just aiming for 250 points every week. You actually can hit four or 500 points on a high-scoring week. It's definitely a yeah. better way. Yeah. As much as people thought the, the thresholds were good for investment and getting money in and things like that, it's not a good way to play so rare. He's aiming to hit 250 points. You should be aiming for the highest score possible, not just to scrape through to try earn a little bit of ETH. I much prefer it now. That's what Sarah Red Darts is for. Try and hit a mediocre score with three players. And we, yeah, we can't do that either. No, we can't. We can't. So we met you boys in Paris at the beginning of July at the So Rare European Championships. Was Was our game... The game we played you, was that the game for 7th v 8th? Or... Yeah, I actually did score the last minute winner, so <laughs> I'm sorry for that. Yeah. Oh, if I knew that, we wouldn't have invited you on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never told you, so <laughs> I was surprised that I am invited here. <laughs> was that not the game that you did your ankle, Mark? It was, yeah. I played about 10 minutes and rolled my ankle. Because old. By the way, <laughs> yeah, we played the last game against Italy, and our, one of our main mains also went down injured and was injured for six weeks. So, <laughs> was that it because happened. the Italians the Italians hurt him, or did he get injured elsewhere? Yeah, we've, we've spoken about the Italians before on here, haven't we? Oh yeah, flailing elbows everywhere. Yeah, we <laughs> we wouldn't be there on the Italian podcast to be honest. <laughs> No, a plane with a fucking, <laughs> oct a plane with a fucking octopus up front. Would you... <laughs> yeah, Yannick played against the big guy, and whoa. it was horrible. But okay, that that's football in Italy, I yeah. guess. Yeah, it Nothing was a good weekend. Though. It was a good weekend, though, wasn't it? Yeah, of course, it was great. Yeah, it was yeah. awesome. Yeah, the, at least was, I scored but... against Italy. It was like my <laughs> yeah. highlight from from the game against Italy. I scored against them. Did you just go and celebrate in front of that big guy? 
I would have. I'd have, <laughs> no, run, I'd have run up and celebrated <laughs> straight in front of him. I think he wasn't on the field anymore. And we oh. lost. Yeah, he wasn't on the on the field anymore too. <laughs> the Italian <laughs> got him. Yeah. Yeah, they've already infiltrated him. We lost Yannick. <laughs> oh, he's back. There we go. There we go. Is his mic gone? I think so. Yeah, see? I think his sound might have gone. See, this is what happens when Adam's not here. Yeah, this is what happens. Although, professionalism although didn't, didn't Adam mute his own mic last week when I listened back? Yeah, I, this is what I mean about... I, I, people make out that I'm the idiot at the podcast, because I am, but... I took my headset off, put it back on thinking nothing had happened and then I couldn't hear Adam and I thought, oh, here we go, I've lost all sound and all that. It turned out he'd muted his mic whilst I was sorting my hair out. So it's on him and also on me for caring about what my hair looks like. <laughs> <laughs> so how do, you, how do you boys find the German community in, in Sora, obviously? We, I mean, we're 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 open to doing Sora Sevens abroad. We've been we've been talking about Netherlands and all sorts, haven't we? I think Germany yeah. would be a good one. What do you, what was the question exactly? The community over in Germany. So, if we want to take play, uh, if we could imagine to take a place here in in Germany one day, or yeah, do we? Yeah. Sevens, yeah, yeah, we we did talk about it in the in our group already. Um, and we think it's uh, possible because in Germany we have a lot of good pitches. Like there mm. are um, football players, like next to Yannick, it's Podolski. And he's yeah, Lucas also Podolski. having, he has some small pitches, pretty similar. I don't know the rules there, but I think that would be also like a cool location. And a lot of uh, Sora guys here and the community is pretty strong. I think we could easily put up an event in a similar way but maybe it's like we hear we heard it's about the world cup and the world cup maybe in a different country we're not involved here in the talks of germany i don't know if the <laughs> location is here <laughs> well, but we will be there no matter where usa 2026 uh, we need to get it sorted don't we as that's got to happen it's got to happen it's got yeah to happen. you've yeah. said it so many times we're kind of committed now i feel yeah, we have yeah. to repeat it every episode. We in the German podcast, you here. Yeah. Let's well, get we'll not, not, not you in the Spain one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. On Twitter, everywhere. Like we, like with the button. The button was also like a, a like a thing we couldn't yeah. imagine ever to happen. It's like with the worker, we have to just repeat it. And one day. Yeah. We just need to make Still it like... so massive that instead of us choosing where it is, we'll have countries bid for it. Like, like the real World Cup. Yeah, and corruption <laughs> is a thing here too. <laughs> corruption is a yep. massive thing. You know, oh, if anyone wants to line my pockets, you know. Uh, if you're having a limited gallery, you're automatically out. <laughs> <laughs> I do think that with there's this quite a high American community on Sora as well. So I don't think it'd be difficult to organize. I just think it'd be difficult to get Sora involved this early. They, I don't think they'd want to commit 18 months to 20 months in advance i think it'd have to be sorted probably next year if not towards the end of next year for them to put their hands in the pockets yeah I think they've got to do yeah a lot of guys from like we i'm pretty sure i'll be here in 2026 like it's not a big deal of commitment because Saray has gone down and up and we are here so it doesn't really matter what state the game is like because we have so much fun and the community is like awesome and I wouldn't mm -hmm. leave it so I could commit today to be there if, if, if possible but oh, I, yeah. I get it that Saray is like a different piece it's a business and they're not that easy to I, I don't think they we can get them today but we'll see so we get all the commitment we charter our own flight over to the US Find some like uni halls that we can everyone can stay in. Like <laughs> yeah, we need, we need like the American trap. boys. Yeah, yeah. The sort of data office, like the Laird, is offering some his garden. I don't know, even know if, he, if there is a garden. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I think the Sora data office over in the US is Laird's spare room, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's in his house. <laughs> <laughs> he just all sleep at Laird's house for two nights. 
Yeah, all 160 of us. <laughs> in his camp, though, in his backyard. He's got some big garden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we might as well play the matches there as well. Oh, well. Some of us can go to Harry. Harry's now, can't we? Harry trades. He's he's over there. We can split us, split them out. It, yeah. Some go to his, some go to Leeds. Some yeah. go to Gator Guy, some go to PSU's house. We're all going to have his own bedroom at this point. Yeah, the only the only issue is like, they probably live about four hours apart from each other. That's nothing over there. Yeah, that's for us a trip to Paris, like from Germany to Paris. It's just <laughs> yeah, <yeah>. in order. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> so speaking Ooh, of Tottenham Germany... Have, Tottenham have just scored. Oof. Who scored? Pedro Porro. Pedro Porro, Madison assist. Oh, Oh, both of my rivals line up. I can't play rivals on band. Stop rubbing it in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, if anyone from Sarah is listening, uh, can you unban as, uh, as, please? Because the uh, Make It A Double Double Road To Glory account was uh, checked and verified <laughs> your end, so please unban him ASAP. It's definitely because I verified my ID today as well, because it's been fine up to now, and I had to submit my driver's license which will be the same license used for my personal account. So they've gone, that's two accounts for you. You're gone. So I would quite like both accounts back, please, at some point. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be helpful. That would be helpful. <laughs> so this past weekend was the return of the Premier League. This coming weekend is the return of the Bundesliga which is perfect timing, considering we've got the German guys on today. How are we feeling about the return of the Bundesliga? You guys excited? Looking forward to it? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I'm really excited. Yeah. We're going to meet next week, uh, next weekend, for the start of the Bundesliga. Yeah, we make a big yeah, watch along. watch every game. Yeah. With like every game, also the MLS games and yeah, all yeah. the other stacks we have and <laughs> collections. We are big fans of collections and XP. So yeah, we're hyped. And we already have a timetable have... for all the matches. We're going to watch yeah. from Friday to Sunday night. So <laughs> when's the first game kickoff? Is it Thursday night? Is it Munch and Gladbach? Friday. Fr- Friday. 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 Friday night. Friday. Munch and Gladbach, Leverkusen. 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 Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. So what do you think about Leverkusen this season? Do you think they're going to do it again? Do you think they'll fall off? Yeah, I've watched the, the Super Cup. I don't know if you've watched it. Like yeah, the Super obviously. Cup was versus my favorite club, Stuttgart, and they lost like three times and they were good in all three matches versus them. And they scored again uh, short before the end of the game and mm. won in penalties. So the luck from their... Last minute winning goals is still there, so I don't have any fear that they will just dominate as much as they did last season. I don't know if you like it, but I think the the transfers were also pretty good. And from a sorry perspective, you do know these players, but you also knew about Grimaldo before other mm. guys did, and they were such good players, and they did not lose their coach or any good player. So no. And how, how do you feel about think, Bayern, Bayern then? Vin, Vincent Company coming in, um, a few new signings, Michael Elise coming over from the Premier League. I won't answer it. So I, I'm a... <laughs> <laughs> Jakob hates Bayern, but uh, yeah. I'm a fan of Bayern, so I can answer it. Um, I'm happy, I'm really happy with Company right now. And I think he's the right choice. Yeah, I think he will do great at Bayern. But it will be difficult against Leverkusen. I think as long as Alonso is there and Wirtz is there, they they haven't lost a good player. So I think they can go for the back-to-back. But Bayern will be better than last season. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to the way Bayern is playing and watch them next week. So I hope they have a good start against Wolfsburg. So... Who do you guys think are going to be top four next season? And who do you think are going to get relegated? So, um, well, I think the yeah, top four is club. pretty clear. Yeah, you could just say, I, I add my favorite club at the end because you don't have it in your top four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's pretty obvious. Um, yeah, I hope Bayern will be yeah, first. Then I think Leverkusen, Leipzig and Dortmund. 
That's my prediction. Yeah, and I will add Stuttgart here. This the chances are small, but their squad is looking a lot stronger than I thought. And I follow been following them for like my whole life. And they never had the chance to make such big deals without selling the whole club. And this time with Dennis Undorf back, it's like the fans favorite and he's awesome in, in Stuttgart. Mm. So due to the Champions League, I don't think they can make it top four in the league, but they will play good football again and score also in Soria pretty well, I think. Yeah. In a similar way of Aston Villa in the Premier League. Basically, great season last season, probably because of Champions League football this season. Squad, they've lost a few players. They've gained some good players, but I just think that their depth, that they'll fall away somewhat a little bit in, in, in the in the Premier League. But they'll, they'll still do well, Villa. I think they'll be about sixth, sixth or seventh or something. Yeah, and there are even more games every season. So the Champions League format, yeah. two more games, it's... For smaller clubs, you have to compare them to the big clubs, and they are still smaller, even if they play like as Villa still has a smaller squad than all the other big guys. Mm -hmm. So it's difficult, yeah. And what about the bottom end of the table then? Well, you can start too. <laughs> so who 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 came up who came up last season? St. Pauli. Um, yeah, Holstein and... Kiel. Kiel, that's it. That. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I have to look. <laughs> I have to look. Um, I think it will be hard for Bochum. I think um, they lost Stöger. He was a great, or uh, he is a great scorer and sorry too. Uh, they lost mm. him to Gladbach. I think, uh, yeah, Gladbach made good additions also with Kleindienst. Um, Heidenheim lost uh, Kleindienst and Beste, their best players. Mm. So, yeah. I think St. Pauli, Heidenheim, Bochum and Kiel, they won't have an easy time next year. So I'm going for uh, Bochum, Pauli and yeah. So two teams are directly relegated and there's one playoff game, relegation game. And uh, I think this will be Heidenheim. Yeah. I think St. Pauli has the best chance to stay up from all these four clubs because the like Heidenheim was kind of a, a team. They have an amazing connection between two players and both gone. And basically their coach is pretty cool and their mentality is great, but their player level is like not comparable to all the other guys. So I think the, the bottom race won't be that close this year because all these four clubs have much smaller squads and they lost their big players. And yeah, so no, none of the big clubs in the second division managed to get up. So this time of the year, so me as a Stuttgart fan, I always worried about relegation this year, even if they fail to to uh, play some good football, there's still no chance to get relegated in the end. This well, year I, I can say it. <laughs> yeah. That's 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 good confidence, that is. Yeah, I, I've I been there for the for the, uh, I was on the pitch for two times in the last eight years uh, when they got back up to the first league, <laughs> so I've been there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, th this year it's Champions League football, and I hope to see them live in some other countries maybe too. So I'm I'm super hyped. I wasn't hyped uh, since being born for as a as a Stuttgart fan because mm. they were. They uh, won the league when I was seven, so I couldn't celebrate too much. And after that, it was like this. <laughs> so now it's the first really good year again. It's quite nice to support a team that has ups and downs, at least, because you go through it all then rather than just... I, yeah. I guess I can't imagine being, like a, at the moment, like a Man City fan, a new Man yeah. City fan. And things yeah. like that, it just I just wouldn't get excited for football and things like that. I'd want you'd want to have a little bit lower expectations so that you can have a season that is way better than you ever thought it could be. So mm, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, when yeah. others, like when others, when others who went to the Premier League, it was like one of the best years of my life. And then I had to watch them play in the Premier League, and it was absolutely dreadful. So <laughs> apart from the first game of the season. Yeah, apart from the f first two games of the season, we beat Crystal Palace, then we beat Newcastle. Yeah. See, it yeah, seems we just... weird, like, 
for me saying that being like a Liverpool fan, but obviously like we, we won trophies when I was younger, like we won the FA Cup, we won the Champions League when I was 15 in 2005, but we never won the league the ho- until um, 2020. We hadn't won the league in the whole time, you know, since I've been born. So that yeah. was like a massive high for us, but you're quite right. If you, if you win it every single season, Surely it gets a little bit. I'm, I'm sure, I don't know if it does or not. To be honest, I'm, I would love Liverpool to win the league every every year. But um, when you when you take you know like like Leicester winning it for example, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, those those absolute like, massive highs you probably just cannot. You know, I'd rather have that season Leicester had than this will annoy a few people because most of the people who play so rare are Celtic fans for some reason. But I'd rather have that season that Leicester had than win the Scottish league every single year. Like, I get, I mean, I see people get excited for Celtic and when they win, they, they see they are passionate and stuff. But for me, I couldn't, I couldn't get myself hyped up for a game that you're already going to thinking, well, we're going to win today. Hmm. Like every yeah. game you're thinking you're going to win. On the other hand, said if you're born as a Celtic fan, you won't switch your club. So yeah. you have to stick to, to it. So yeah, I was born as a Stuttgart fan, so I'm staying Stuttgart fan and... Oh, I didn't. I didn't choose Huddersfield, mate. Believe me. <laughs> no one yeah, chooses that, I know that that thought. <laughs> and when you see these clubs like in the Premier League or the Bundesliga, and they're absolutely buzzing to like even make the top, like finish in the top ten or something, yeah. it's ridiculous, isn't it? You know. And I'm going to do a completely the best transition in the world now and say you've, you've nicked mine. Speaking, I was about to do one. Speaking of top tens. <laughs> Should we go on to some tenable? I was just about to say, speaking of big clubs, do you want to do my tenable first, Mark? If 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 you're watching on YouTube, you could probably see the cogs ticking in my brain as I was trying to piece that together. <laughs> I'm yeah, a little bit worried, but okay. <laughs> so, so you were going to say, explain the rules first. Yeah, yeah. so we've, we've prepared a tenable each. Um as I think you guys are aware, we do we do a top ten list um, every week. So as has prepared one, I've prepared one. We'll go up against one of you each. Um, I don't know what as has prepared. He doesn't know what I prepared. So there's there is a possibility that we prepared the same thing. Probably not. Um, but you never know. You never know. I'm a bit. I'm a bit worried. Mine's been done before, and I've I've almost fallen for this in the past. But I'm I'm hoping not. All right. Do you want to do you want to start with yours then, As? Yeah, we'll go with mine, and then okay. who wants so to we're... go up against Mark, and who wants to go up against me? <laughs> and whoever chooses me, it means you're most likely going to win because I barely ever win at this game. <laughs> <laughs> so none of us want to choose Mark. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I can go first. I, I I can go first. Okay, so Mark versus Jacob. Are you ready for the question? Go on then. Yeah. So my list is the top ten most valuable clubs in 2024. Now they valued it as the richest owned clubs. Now okay. I don't know whether that means <laughs> revenue, whether it's transfers, and the only clue I'm going to give you, because I feel like it would be a bit of a spanner in the works, is that none of the Saudi clubs and things like that are in it. Okay. They are all, they are all European. Okay, that's the only clue I'll give you. Perfect. Would you like to go first, Jacob? So, yeah, I drop a big name. I would start with PSG. PSG are third, so they are on the list, number three. Okay, okay. I'm going to say obviously Manchester City. Manchester City are second on the list. Now, to give you an idea of values, Manchester City is £710 million. Uh, PSG is £689 million. So that's kind of the ballpark of two and three. Okay. Okay. So, so back to you, Jacob. I'm going to go with Chelsea. Chelsea are number nine. Oh. At five, £506 million. Okay, I'm going to say who I think is number one. I'm going to say Newcastle United. 
Newcastle United is not on the list. Wow. I thought about that and too. This, yeah. And you and said this, owners. By the way, you said owners. It says, who is the richest club in the world? It says is the list. Right. And this is on 888 Sport from 11 days ago. Okay. So not okay. Well, considering I said I thought that would be number one, that is quite embarrassing. <laughs> well, I will tell you, the 17th, apparently. Okay. 247 million. Now, not to give any clues to Jacob, but I thought the number one was going to be the most obvious. So I'm going to prem again and try Manchester United. Manchester United and number five, 640. Yeah, Chelsea were ninth, did you say? Yeah. Uh, so, okay, I'll say Real Madrid. Real Madrid are number one. Yeah. 700, 715 million. So we're still looking for four, six, seven, eight, and ten. I think. Okay. So if Madrid is up, I have to go with Messi's boyhood club. Not new old boys, but Barcelona. <laughs> Barcelona is number four, apparently, on the list, which I was surprised at because I thought they were skinned. Uh, 688 million. Uh, okay, I'm going to say a team that Jacob does not like, but Yannick does like. I'm going to say Bayern, Bayern Munich. Number six, 640 million. So we have how many left there? Two left. Jacob's still got two lives, so you've still got a chance. Mark's only got one. Yeah. If we complete the list, then you win. Hmm. I am going with the white guess. I am going with the Juventus. Juventus are number 11. No! Oh. Really true. I'm proud. Seventy-two. <laughs> oh damn. I mean, I've got to say Liverpool, haven't I? Liverpool is number seven. Yeah. So five. So five hundred eighty-seven. Oh, so you got two left. Because there's two. I don't think you've said eight and eight and ten now. Okay. So it's a shootout. Both lost to life. If you both uh, don't get the next ones right, because Jacob went first, means you draw. I'm going with Arsenal. Arsenal is number 10. So it's on the list mm -hmm. at 407, 457 million. So all uh, you're we... looking for is number 8. Number 8. Okay. To tie the game. I've actually got all the way up to 20 on this. So if you do tie, I'll let you have another go at one at once to 20 and try to get a winner out of that. Mm. See, what's throwing me is... Mm. Okay. I'll say Atletico Madrid. Atletico Madrid are number 15 on the list. I thought they might have been, so, yeah. I couldn't think of anything else. Jacob takes the win. Any ideas <laughs> on number eight? No. So another London club. What about Dortmund? Spurs. Oh, okay. Spurs. Tottenham Hotspur are number eight on the list. Uh, Dortmund are 12th. So oh. Spurs higher than Arsenal? Apparently so. Yeah, see, um, I did actually think of Spurs, but I thought there's, n I couldn't see them being higher than Arsenal. Yeah. So yeah, that's the that's the list. So one nil to one nil to the doppel DMP. There you awesome. Go. Awesome. <laughs> maybe maybe that's uh, one trophy Spurs can put in their cabinet that they're more valuable than uh, Arsenal. <laughs> go on then, okay. Mark. Tell me what I'm about to lose to. So my list for yourself as and Yannick is Bundesliga related. It's <laughs> so rare related. And what I would like to know from you boys is who are currently the top 10 most expensive 
players to buy on so rare who play in the who play in the Bundesliga. Now this is based on the last three day average of their rare cards. Okay. Okay. So okay, I mean, it's yeah. Bundesliga really, but it's something you could probably get. Yeah, I think I know a few. Okay. So who like Yannick? Did you want to start us off? I'll let Yannick go first. Uh, I go with Musiala. You need so, to repeat it again. Oh, I didn't yeah. hear it. I go Jamal, with Musiala. Okay, Jamal Musiala. Musiala. Yeah, Musiala is number two. His rare card is currently five hundred and one pounds. Number two. See, that was going to be my first guess because I thought it was the most obvious. Um, I mean, I'm going to go with the OG and say Joshua Kimmich. So Joshua Kimmich is number six. Okay, um, I will go with Grimaldo. Grimaldo is number nine. Three hundred oh, three hundred three hundred and sixty-seven pounds three-day average. Okay, well. I'm gonna say Harry Kane. Harry Kane is number one. Six hundred and ninety one pounds, three day average. I'm gonna say Gregor Kobel. Gregor Kobel is number three, four hundred and ninety four. I'm glad you said that because I'd have never got that. Um <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna say Florian Verts. Florian Verts is fifth on the list. 438 great British pounds. I'm struggling after this. <laughs> Yannick? So you, you've got what first, you've got second, you've got third, you've got fifth, you've got sixth, you've got ninth. Uh, what about Odyssey? Michael oh. Elise. Is number yeah. four, four hundred and forty oh, yeah. pounds. Yeah, this is where I start going a bit downhill here. Um, so you've got to get uh, number seven, number eight, and number ten. I know a few good scorers, but I don't know if they're that valuable. Um, I think this could be my first life lost, but I'm going to say Leroy Sane. Leroy Sane is not on the list. Yeah, I didn't think he would be. He's not even in the top 30 that I can see. Is he not? Not that I can see. No. I'm guessing there is a Stuttgart player above him. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I'm thinking about Schlotterbeck. Oh, no, don't be on there. So Nico Schlotterbeck is number eight, three hundred and seventy-two pounds for his rare card, a three-day average. That's, who I was, that's genuinely who I was going to say instead of Sane, and I thought, no, he can't be on there. <laughs> that's a really bad do. Um, I think this if he's eight, this could be me gone after this one. I'm just saying Bayern Munich played at this point, because um, I was going to say. Manuel Neuer, in the hope that he was the most expensive keeper. Could be, yeah. So, Manuel Neuer is number 10. Oh, jeez. We're still in the game. Oh, £318, three-day average. How many players are missing? You've got one more player to get, which is number seven. Oh. Oh. Hey, I'll I'll take the loss, but I'm happy with this. I thought I'd be gone a long time ago. <laughs> That's difficult. But I will go with a player from Jacob's favorite club. And I will go with Mittelstadt. So Max Mittelstadt is number 13. So he is not on the list. 
I can't even think of another Bundesliga player to pick now. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Ten. Number seven. You both know exactly, obviously, who he is. Is is Frimpong still there? I don't know if he transferred. I'll say Frimpong because that's the only player I know that can score quite well. So, Frimpong is not on the list. Yeah. So, the doppel in our DMP, guys. You went first, Yannick, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's, so that's, so he so that's the win. That's the win. Was this your uh, second miss? So, would you like a clue? Think of uh, my, yeah, think think of my name. Think of think of one of the greatest Barcelona midfielders of all time. And then think of my surname. Oh, Javi Simons. Oh, Simmons. Javi, Javi oh, Simmons. How could I miss him? No. <laughs> oh, yeah. I bought, I bought his uh, Paris card um, with like <laughs> level 20 for this upcoming season. Yeah. Oh, no. So, Javi Simmons is number seven. Where is um, Nubel? Uh, Nubel is 11th. Okay. That, that would, that's would be more. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Nubel, 200, 264 pounds three day average, and Boniface is 12th, Mittelstadt 13th. Ooh, yeah, yeah. So, obviously, that's those were the three day averages. So, that's a combination of their, I guess, of their um, in season and classic season. But looking at the yeah, l yeah, looking at the floor prices, the order is pretty much the same. The top 10 is still the same. So, yeah, I didn't thought Naya I would be there. No, yeah, I, got, he, I got lucky with that. He crept on. He crept onto the list. <laughs> I mean, so to well, be honest, well done to I, the doppel DMP guys. Have yeah. doppel, doppeled the uh, make it a double double. <laughs> <laughs> well, which should we go straight into another game, Mark? That we're not very good at. Also, let's go straight into darts. But before we do, I have to do an announcement. You do. So, So Rare Darts this season is going to be brought to you by the best prediction website out there, predictify.com. So, shout out to those guys. They're going to be sponsoring So Rare Darts this season. And you would have noticed that last week they announced their pricing structure. And what they're doing is they are have got some sign up offers. So, if you if you sign up. Um, you'll be entered into prize draws um, to win match tickets, uh, merchandise, and all that sort of stuff. But what they've kindly done for us is they've given us our own sign-up offer. So for anyone who signs up in the next two weeks um, via our link, and I believe the link is you just type in M-I-A-D-D -D when you sign up. Not only is it, a code? is it a code they put in rather than a link? Yeah, it's a, it's a sign up code. So you sign up using the code M I A D D, and for anyone that signs up using that code um, and signs up to the all regions access, not only will you be entered into the prize draw for tickets, free twelve month membership, uh, merch. You're also be entered into a draw to win a signed Burnley shirt. And straight away, I know someone will buy that Burnley shirt off you if you win it and you don't want it. <laughs> and he's not here. <laughs> and he's not here. And he's not here. So big thanks to the guys at Predictify who have um, kindly given us that shirt to give away as part of our sign-up link. So sign up to the All Access, um, use the code M-I-A-D-D, and you will be entered into the draw to win the Burnley shirt, as well as all the other good stuff. Into darts? Could have given us, an, could have given us a good shirt to get people involved with, but, you know, Burnley will do. Oh, uh, that's true. <laughs> you can't have everything, can you? No. So, so rare darts, boys. The aim is three players of your choice, any position, any team, any t tactic you want to take. 
your aim is to get 180 points. Anything over, you are bust. Anything under is a score. So last week, obviously Mark wasn't here last week. That was last week, wasn't it, Mark? It was, yeah. So we, cho- so we chose for you, and we went with Wackim Anderson. Wackim. Um, I went with the Sora slash Spanish icon of AC Palazon, and Adam went with Dwight McNeil. We scored 114.2. Uh, 114.2, we did shit again. Um, Whereas Russ went with Sven Mijnen. How do you say it? Mijnen. Mijnen, that's it. Oh, that's definitely Adam. I'm going to clip that and take the piss out of me again. Uh, Bob Scoofs and John McGinn. And he got 173.3. So that's currently the season two leader. So it Russ takes top of the leaderboard for season two. And if he holds out, as we agreed, that person has to give their gallery away to one of our listeners. So he's currently <laughs> top. That's why we do shit every week, isn't it? We do it on we purpose. Don't... Completely on purpose. Can't, can't give it away if you do shit. So you boys have a quick think about what three you want to give in. Because I've got an idea for us, Mark. Yeah. Is that do we obviously pick Adams for him? Mm-hmm. Surely we pick a Burnley player. Yeah. Or do, we, or do we pick a Blackburn one just to really wind him up? Yeah. Wait, Burnley are away at Sunderland. Should we pick a Sunderland player then? Oh, yeah. Should we go for a Sunderland player? Should we go for Bellingham? <laughs> yeah, should we go to Bellingham? <laughs> yeah, so we've got <laughs> Job. the Job Go with Bellingham. both Bellinghams. We could go Bellingham, Bellingham. Could go for yeah, double bubble Bellingham. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm. I've got a bit of a. I'm going to pick someone who I think will score quite high, to be honest. But mm. the, only, the only reason I want to use him is because I've started to get very attached to him because he, he seems to score very well every week, and he's ex Mechelen. So I'm going David Bates. David they're at Bates. home to they're at home to be a shot or whatever they're called. I feel like with picking Joe Bellingham playing against Burnley, he doesn't actually score that well anyway on Sarah. No. I think we need to pick some a couple of good players, don't we? Yeah. So David Bates is a great shout. Do I go for a, a Man City player at home to Ipswich? Or do I go for a CSKA Moscow player at home to newly promoted Akron. I'd say Man City. Man City. Shall we go for Manchester City and seeing as he got a goal at the weekend, should we go for Kovacic? Kovacic will do. Is he going to DMP? Is Rodri going to be back? He could potentially be back. Ooh, maybe not then. Maybe not. Why don't I'll you go, go for... I'll go for, uh, I'll go for Kevin, Kevin De Bruyne. KDB. That's that's him getting injured in training this week. So, <laughs> boys, have you got any idea on this? Are you just taking a punt, going random, or have you got some strategy to it? Do we choose a team? Like, three players for both of us? or Yeah, three each. Do two, three each. Yeah, okay. Okay. Right. You could even yeah, you could start for a Stuttgart, Stuttgart stack. I'm going with a Bayern stack, and I thought about it before the podcast. And I will go with Neuer, Upamecano, and Musiala, because I think Bayern either won't keep the clean sheet or Musiala won't get a decisive. And Ubermecano will score good. So, yeah, that's my team. Ubermecano, Musiala, and Neuer. Nice. Well, I like that. I'm not I, always like, I always like when someone comes prepared as well. It makes me really <laughs> makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not a team with him. And I hope they do <laughs> even worse than your three picks last week. <laughs> From the bottom of I my hope heart. They will all get like. Three decisives. 
<laughs> the funny thing is we watch it together and I maybe maybe I'm driving home before the game. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Yeah, so I'm gonna go. I need to search for the matchups because I was familiar with the game, so I also prepared some boys. The first one was a Prem player I've watched last Friday, and it is Lisandro Martinez, and he played really well, I think. So he could smash another 60 70 easily against Brighton. It's not easy, but versus Adama Traore, it wasn't easy either, but he yeah. played really, really well, I think. Yeah, the Licht was soft. I think that would could be a good duo back. I mean, I watched, yeah. I did watch the second half of that game, and Miles yeah. Rowie looked really poor. He had a he defensively looked very weak, but it might just be settling in. But he, yeah. he didn't look great. So, for the second player, I've chosen. Oh, I don't. Oh. What's happening with my only big U23 goalkeeper from Benfica? What did he do? Do you know anything? No. A, no, why? A, What's happened? There's a red X on Sora Data, and it's like, it's not the only player that got hurt or got transferred or got kicked out of the club this weekend. That <laughs> I, 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 I wasn't too happy this weekend. <laughs> is, it, is it Truven? Yeah, Truven. And this, there is a red 40 minutes yeah, ago were... updated. It does say red X. I actually. always saw yellow uh, X. <laughs> yeah, now it's red. red. I don't know. He played a full 90 last game, so I didn't worry at all. But yeah, <laughs> great. So I'm going to go with another player. And I'm going with the Stuttgart player. Because I know they will play well. And Angelo Stiller mm -hmm. is maybe the new... Gundogan in the national team in the future and he's a really great German midfielder and always puts up some great AA no matter what the scores is so they play Freiburg in the first game and Arjuno still is kind of the favorite of the coach so he will play every game this is my second pick and my third is one of the first players I bought on the platform it's Johnny Burkhardt it's from Mainz and he's the captain now. I bought him when he was really young and he's one of the most promising strikers in this area and he's a fan favorite and he won't leave the club because there is a lot. He's pretty loyal to the fans and now he's captain and still U23 for the season. So he can't score any AA, but he will score and 60 is like the goal here too. Yeah, yeah. I, I always love a player that's loyal to a club. That yeah, would rather yeah. stay. It's so stay rare the these people. days, but yeah. Nah, fuck Supermendi. So <laughs> <laughs> he scored as well at the weekend. Yeah, I know. Any, yeah, so, any so, glad, so, so glad I bought, bought two of his cards before the news <laughs> properly came out. I knew I knew I should have sold them. I knew I should have sold them. Oh well. He'll still score. He'll still score well. Yeah, yeah. He was on the bench. He he came off the bench and scored against your boys, yeah. didn't he? He did. That was yeah. a good win for Vaticano. Yeah, we're like third in the league after one game. Perfect. Come on. <laughs> you, you, you're having a whale of a time. Vaticano up there, Huddersfield up yeah. there. Yeah, I'm having a great season so far. It's just a shame my sorry results don't show it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm currently sat checking scores just to see if I can win a limited boxing challenger because my weekend's been that bad. Yeah. Like I'd, I'd take a box at this point. <laughs> I've spent what? my whole summer preparing for my La Liga lineups and I have like a big gallery, Barcelona, Madrid, Atletico Madrid, Atletico Bilbao, all the big guys except for Madrid because I want to win them. So this is kind of the strategy. And I managed to get relegated in the first week from my Division 1 lineup because Gundogan is apparently injured and now apparently he will never play again for Barcelona because he will be <laughs> transferred in the best case, to Saudi, so awesome. <laughs> they, I saw the they tried doing a deal with Man City today, didn't they? Where they wanted to swap Gundogan for Rodri. Yeah, yeah that's the most disrespectful thing I've ever seen. <laughs> no way he's coming back to City after this deal. <laughs> oh, I, Barcelona are the most confusing club in football. I think I don't know where they get it from. They're, yeah. they're the worst managed club in the world. <laughs> By far. <laughs> Always have cracking players, though. 
Yeah, yeah they the... somehow somehow do well, don't they? Every time. La Masia is great, and all the players they're playing. Fermi Lopez, for example, is also like nobody's talking about him, but they're so good. But their management is just. I don't know how a club of that much success and and that that kind of stature can be run so poorly. They should just be able to be competitive every year, financially stable, do whatever they need to do in the market, and they're just absolutely running to the ground. Yeah. Did you guys see the so rare community vote on Twitter today? So well, yeah, for the no. game weeks, game week seven, they're going to adjust the matrix and a community vote. So you could have picked the fighting special, which basically instead of a negative score for fouls and yellow cards, you get a positive score. You can pick a shooter <laughs> special, um, which takes your shot on target from plus three to a plus eight. Uh, the Maestro special, which takes a big chance created from a plus three to a plus six, and an attempted assist from a plus two to a plus four. Or the Sniper special, which increases accurate passes and accurate long balls. Did you vote? And what did you vote for? There's only one winner for me, the fight in special. Yep. Yeah, I did not vote, but I would definitely take the yellow card because it's the most annoying thing on Sora seeing your players getting a yellow card and if you could be happy about yeah. that for one week. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. It was like eight the points one... when yeah, they get a yellow yeah. card. Yeah. yeah. But I, I would love uh, like a special mode for missed penalties because my, my players <laughs> are... In the last week, three of my players missed a penalty. So, yeah. <laughs> And Do you know? I, I, I hate it. I find it wild that for missing a penalty, you don't get a negative decisive action. It's just a big chance missed. So you also get you also get minus five for missing a penalty on top of a big chance missed. Oh right, okay. Yeah, so yeah, you but, get but, minus ten. Yeah, but uh, yeah, okay, yeah. I'm always wondering by the 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 guy that's got get the foul or for example get, so it he earns the penalty does that not get any positive points here because it's not he a, his fault that he will no. you don't even get a big chance created i don't think so even if yeah you i don't it, think you, it. Don't, you don't yeah yeah you don't even get the big chance created or if they score it you get an assist yeah mm. oh like a penalty one yeah it's it's a bit of a backwards one i think with that fighting special that they should have done it even further and said if your guy gets sent off, you get like 25 points. <laughs> Decided to make him for red card. Is there no yeah, change yeah. to red cards? Yeah, uh, if they'd have done like a decisive for a red card, that would have been brilliant. Yeah. So it's one yellow card, you're fine, and then it's like the 20th minute and you, you, the rest of the game, it's still, please don't get sent off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Automatic 100 if you play a bite someone. And... <laughs> Suarez is <laughs> Suarez, yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'd be pleased to know that the fighting special is currently far out in the league. They're on, it's on 49%. Oh, Shooting awesome. and Maestro is on about 20, 25, and then Sniper is only on 6%. Yeah, I'm bored well, after, after this record. Yeah, I know. I quoted it and put, if you don't choose the fighting one, I will lose a lot of respect for you. Which then the next tweet was something about I think Quinny put something like uh, we're really seeing people's true colours with this uh, <laughs> weekly special, and I thought that kind of uh, puts me in a bad light. I think on that one. <laughs> oh, it'll be fun! It will be fun. If you could choose something similar, then like a different weekly special, like like changing the matrix or something that would normally be a negative, what would it be? Um, I think I think big chance missed to be a good one. If like oh yeah, plus, plus five call it like if you miss plus it. five instead, <laughs> yeah, like call it like a howler or some howler week. And if every time you every time you miss a big chance, it's plus five rather than minus five. Yeah, that would be fun. I always it's, yeah. Sarge, I always... Sergeant had four were it four or five big chance missed for Norwich this weekend, and. It was just one of them where you, he's, he's like half time. His score was like fifteen because he had twenty from my like big mm. minus some big chance miss. It's crazy. They'd never be able to do it, but I always wanted to do one where I create a team of marks. So like I could have Mark Andre to Stegen, Mark Gehi, you know, I don't know, 
any mark. There's, lo- there's loads. There's loads them. of them. Yeah. 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 If, if you, you you have to enter a team full of players with your own name, so I don't know you guys. Uh, Yannick, I Vest- know. Yannick Vestergaard. Yannick Vestergaard. Yannick Dem. He's playing in the second German division. But there you go. Yeah, I think I did. But what about me, <laughs> Jacob? Uh, Jacob. I can't Jacob, Mur- Jacob, Jacob Murphy. Plays in Newcastle. Okay. There's, there's a guy him. called J- Jacob Brion for Go Ahead Eagles. Jacob. Well, Lassen's could you count um, y- Jakob Brun Larsen? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. For the special, I would call it. <laughs> the only ones I can think for me are Aaron Long at LAFC and Aaron Ramsey. That's the only yeah. two I can think of. Well, there'll be one DMP in there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Aaron Ramsdale. Aaron Ramsdale. Yeah. Aaron Wambisaka. Okay, two DMPs in there. <laughs> Wambisaka will be all right. Switch over to L- uh, MLB and Aaron Judge. Mm. <laughs> there's a load of marks in the in the Spanish second division. Yeah. There's, there a, there's an actual player called just called Mark M A R C. <laughs> I should have his card, really. Yeah, yeah. you should. Go for it. Right, boys, is there anything else that you wanted to talk about? Or can we skedaddle for the evening? Because I know Adam is desperate to get back from the Leicester versus Tottenham game to uh, edit this and upload it to the YouTube and to the Spotify for first thing tomorrow morning. Awesome. Yeah, no. That's it for for me. It was a pleasure being here. Thanks for inviting us. Thanks very much for coming on, guys. And if you are yeah, flu- if you are fluent in German, um, go and listen to the Doppel DNP podcast. Yeah, and you try to cool. improve your German skills, and we will invite you back over one day. <laughs> one <laughs> Maybe day. Maybe before before the World Cup. <laughs> yeah, give me like a couple yeah. years, bit of Duolingo, yeah. bit of Duolingo and, and, and we'll be there. Yeah, maybe partnership. Like, if they listen, they Sounds will send good. you. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> the next year is closed. I thought we could run like an AI translation at the same time and it'd, uh, it'd flow perfectly fine. Yeah. Yeah. Like in neutral. In... Awesome. Great. Awesome. No, Thanks very much, guys. Me, Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks for coming on. See you next Anything week. Is. Cheers, boys. Au revoir. Bye. Cheers. <laughs>